Hey, what's up YouTube? Bronze Age Nerd here, and I wanted to go over my next submission to CGC. This is going to be a one comic book submission, and to recap, what I'm doing is going over all the submissions that I sent off to CGC. Um, I sent off three submissions at the same time. They arrived at CGC headquarters on October 1st, and we're just waiting to get back those shipments. I've gotten one back already. You can see it on my channel already that I've done a recap of the unboxing, uh, breakdown of the values, and this would be the next one that I expect to get back, so I'm going to do this one first. It's a value tier submission. I only had one comic book to send off as a value tier comic. I'm not a big um, Silver Age guy. Um, I don't have a ton of those comics. I wish I did, um, but I grew up in the 90s collecting, and I didn't really go backwards too often, but I did for this issue. I bought this issue when I was pretty new to the comic buying thing, um, and what that means is I was about, oh, probably 12 when I bought this. Uh, I'm 38, so that gives you an idea uh, uh, when I bought this and how long it's been in my collection. Um, I think I looked at this issue once, and I, you know, I was very careful about protecting my comics, um, I knew this was a reprint. Um, if you aren't aware, um, in the late hundreds of, or the, sorry, the late, um, uh, before you get to issue 100, um, a lot of the Uncanny X-Men comic books are actually reprints of the earlier part of the run. So this is X-Men 81, or you could call it Uncanny X-Men 81, although the comic hadn't become uncanny yet. Um... X-Men Volume 1, number 81. And it's a reprint of X-Men 33. Uh, this story is called Into the Crimson Cosmos. It's a uh, you know very popular juggernaut story, obviously, as you can tell. Um, so it's, just, it's a cool issue. And I wanted to go over real fast uh, with you my impressions of what I think this could get for a grade. Um, also talk a little bit about why I'm getting it graded. So, we can see as we're starting to look at these pictures of everything showing up on this comic book that corners are in decent shape. Um, we know right away from looking at these photos that we are not dealing with a 9-8. We can just get that out of our, of our uh, uh, comic goggles, if you will. Um, it's in good shape, but it's not a 9-8 we see that there is some pretty good um, um, cover roll going on there on the spine um, so that uh, we're not going to be seeing the ni nice clean spine that we're used to. We see some blunting on the bottom right corner. Um, on the back, you know, it's in, it's in pretty decent shape, um, all things considered. Uh, we see some dents uh, and some creases in it. We see some dirt on the back cover. Um, top left back corner looks pretty good. Uh, bottom spine side corner um, dirty. And bottom left side corner doesn't look that bad either. Interior, uh, by CGC standards, I'd say we're looking at white pages. Um, although technically. <laughs> I don't think we really are, but that's that's what they call it. Um, and just kind of an overall impression of the book. I, you know, when I grade comic books, and I am by no means an expert, folks, the reason I'm doing this channel, the reason I'm sharing this stuff with you, is because I'm just now getting into this stuff. I don't have all the answers. I'm not an expert grader. Um, I've got one submission of five comics that just came back from CGC. And those were all modern books. Um, so take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. Hopefully the whole point of this is you can see what I'm seeing, what I'm pointing out, and follow up on my later video when I get the comic book back and see what CGC saw. And we can decide, oh, hey, I missed this or I missed that. Or here's what the grade is and here's how far off I was. And that's kind of the whole point of of what I'm doing with these CGC submission videos, and I'm hoping that's helpful. I'm hoping that's valuable if you're thinking about submitting comics to CGC. Um, but what I do when I grade a comic, again, as an amateur, is I look at the front cover, 
I look at all the corners. I hold the comic book up to a light source. Preferably daylight works really well. Um, if you have like a, um, a bright LED light, that works pretty well. Um, any kind of high-powered flashlight. You got to be a little careful not to have something so bright that you blow out the blemishes. But you have to basically learn how to find the comic book at an, uh, uh, how to aim it at an angle to the light source. So you can see here that I've angled this comic book so that you can see there's a large crease in the middle of that by his thumb uh, that goes between Iceman's head and his thumb. And I did that on purpose to show you, you know, you have to kind of get under an angle and just, you can't just look at a cover straight on. And depends, it depends on your light, quite frankly. You want to play around. Look at a comic book you know has some defects. Look at it under several different types of light and see what you see. But basically what I do is I look at the front cover. I look at the corners. I look to see how sharp they are. I look at the spine. I look for spine ticks. And then I start to hold up the cover at an angle to light sources and see what I can see as far as creases, blemishes. Um, is there any color touch up I can see because it looks like it's hitting the light differently? Um, those sorts of things. Um, and so here I've shown you kind of each cover's corner. Uh, I've shown you what that, that big crease looks like in the middle. Um, the general quality of the cover of the comic. Um, guys, CGC, from what I understand, and I've, I've done research, but I haven't actually, of course, um, seen or heard uh, uh, much from an actual CGC grader, but I've watched the interviews that are out there. And from what I can tell, um, basically they care about the covers a lot too. And it makes sense if you think about it. Uh, they can say all day long that they grade a comic book front to back. And they, they do. They look through the comic book. They'll see things like a torn page, a missing Marvel value stamp. They'll see those things. But honestly, that comic book is in, they call it encapsulated, we call it slabbed. To where you can only see the front and back cover, unless there's a part of the cover missing or something. So obviously they're going to focus on that a little bit more. I think that's a fair assumption to make. Um, they do still look at the inside, and so do I. I still want to see what the inside looks like. But I think you need to judge a comic book by its cover uh, and back cover a lot more than its interior when you're talking about a submission to CGC. And Based on what I see here, I would give this comic book a 6.0. And as I've mentioned before, I grade harsh. So uh, what I mean by that is I automatically lower what I think the real grade is one grade level, unless I'm convinced it's a 9.8. Like I don't think it's a 9.9 .9 and I lower it to 9.8. I assume everything's a 9.8 um, and then I kind of lower from there as I see defects. And that, looking through this, it got me down to a 6.5. There's just a, a, a number of defects to add up. Um, there's that, that wrap roll on the spine to where the staples are more towards the front cover than they are to the back. They're no longer sitting straight on the spine. There's those uh, uh, dirt spots on the back, um, the crease in the front. Um, those sorts of issues all add up to where we know this isn't a 9.8, we know it's not a 9.6, we know it's not a 9.4, we know it's not a 9.2, and so on and so on. And where we finally arrive, uh, or where I arrived, is that I think this is a 6.5. And because most um, uh, new graders tend to overgrade, I automatically knock it down one grade. So I think it's a 6.0 is what my my <laughs> my final answer will be on what the grade of this comic will be. And you'll get to follow along with me when I get this submission back from CGC. And we'll see if I got a 6.0 or if I got lower or if I got higher. Uh, hopefully we'll get some graders notes. That'd be nice to see. And we can see what uh, what they thought versus what I called out in this video. In the comments below, let me know what you see that you think makes this something other than what I said it is. Um, by all means, point out what I'm not seeing. Um, you know, is it higher, is it lower? Um, I would think probably lower than higher, uh, but I, I'm curious to see what you have to say. 
Um, and then, for those that might be wondering, why am I submitting this comic to CGC? This is not um, a key issue by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a an older X-Men comic. Um, I told you I bought it during my childhood. Wouldn't, wouldn't that mean I'd want to keep it? Well, my whole collection, uh, at this point, I'm focusing on a, a list of comics that I want to end up in my final collection and cool cover buys and things that I like and, and things like that will kind of stay in my collection for a while probably, maybe, maybe not but a lot of like X-Men first appearances and key issues are what I'm really going after um, a, a few other things too, like some, some G.I. Joe comics and if you start to follow the channel you'll see that there's some things that I, I definitely gravitate towards but this X-Men 81 which is a reprint of X-Men 33, isn't one of them. This isn't something that I want to stay in my collection. Um, I think that I could get a little bit of money for it. Not a lot, but I think I could get a little bit of money for it. And I think that I could um, at least get more than I, I paid for it, plus the price of getting it graded. And I could sell it and then use that money to help fund my hobby of looking for and collecting other comics I want. Um, that's a big part of what I want to do uh, with my comic book collection. And as you follow along with the channel, what you'll see me do is sell some comics and then put that money back into my collection in different ways, in different comic books. Um, and that's that's kind of really the whole point of it. That's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this purely for the point of, of selling it. The other thing you might wonder is, did I send this off to get cleaned and pressed? And that was a really tough decision for me. I decided not to. And the reason I decided not to was the grade bump that I thought I would get from a clean and a press, which I do think I would get a bump. I think that a clean and a press would help this book. Um, hopefully it would get some of that, if not all that gunk off the back. And I think it would get rid of that nasty crease that's in the front. But I don't think it would cover the cost of getting it clean and pressed at CGC. And we're living in a strange time right now. Um, this is, if you're watching this in the future, hopefully it's in the rearview mirror. Um, but we're living during the COVID-19 pandemic right now. Um, this is this is December 1st, 2020, um, before I, I imagine things are going to get pretty bad. But I, I, I don't have access to a cleaner and a presser without sending off more books. And so the process of sending off books, getting them clean and pressed... Um, by a third party uh, presser and then sent back to me and then sending it back to CGC uh, to get graded is a long time. It's a lot of shipping. You add up all that cost of shipping and I may as well go through CGC. And again, I, I sort of feel like this, this comic book just isn't going to get to a point where that's going to matter. I could definitely be wrong about that. I fully admit that that, that could be a mistake and a miscalculation on my part. But I think that's where it's going to end up um, for a grade. And if that's the case, if I could get like a 6.5 or a 7 out of a clean and press, I don't think it's really going to make a big enough difference to be worth it. Uh, and we'll see. I could be proven wrong. I'm really curious to, to see what you guys all think about the submission. Um, let me know below in the comments, duders. I want to know what you think about the grade, what you think about the submission, what you think about my plan. What's your plan? What's your collection goal? What are you doing? Uh, I love interacting with, with people. Um, I'm still pretty new to this whole thing. And of course, I love you following along. So if you want to check it out, if you want to uh, tell me your story and what's going on with you, I'm definitely interested in hearing that. Uh, thanks for watching this video. As always, I want to remind you, hey, 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 read comics every day. Have a great day.